All right, so our first speaker is Anis uh, Tzahid Defart. Uh, she's a master's student at the University of Tehran in Iran, uh, where she studied uh, electrical engineering. But I think she is now trying to, or thinking about moving into computer science and, and neuroscience. And I think she's on the right path because uh, uh, she's now combining uh, fMRI and machine learning to classify autism spectrum disorders. And I think she started this project at the Neuromatch Academy uh, last summer. So I'm looking forward to listening to more about this. Yeah. Welcome, Anis, and the stage is yours. Thank you. And uh, thank you everybody for listening and watching our presentation. First of all, our group is composed of two EC engineering students, a medical student, and a physics student. And I'm going to talk about enhancing classification of autism spectrum disorder using resting state fMRI with machine learning approach and dimensionality reduction. First of all, autism spectrum disorder, ASD, is a relatively common neurodevelopmental disorder with almost entirely unknown causes. People with autism typically show abnormal social interactions, deficit in verbal and nonverbal communication, lack of empathy, and a behavioral pattern of doing repetitive actions. Early diagnosis of ASD using non-behavioral measurements can lead to improved outcomes for children with ASD, such as um, a specialized education, which can lead them to join the society sooner and better. Um, Children with uh, autism exhibit various abnormal features of brain structure, most notably an increase in cerebral volume in both gray and white matter, possibly because of accelerated growth in early childhood. In addition, uh, post-mortem neuropathology has revealed abnormalities in cortical cytoarchitecture and diffusion MRI results point to disorganization of white matter pathways. Some scientists suggest that autism may result from an overabundance of short range or local cortical pathways that interfere with the functional differentiation of brain regions. Loss of function connectivity during task and risk conditions has been reported, for example, between uh, regions of frontal and parietal cortex. Functional MRI um, have revealed that people with autism fail to show the characteristic deactivation of midline default network areas such as the medial prefrontal cortex and posterior cingulate cortex when, transition, when transitioning from a state of cognitive rest to an attention demanding cognitive task. The amount of the activation in the medial prefrontal cortex was inversely correlated with the clinical measure of social impairment. This lack of the activation may be explained by the low level of default activity during rest and autism. Uh, finally, the scientific question that we are going to talk about is how well can we detect ASD condition based on resting state fMRI data? At first, we considered the autistic children data set, which includes images of children's faces uh, who are diagnosed with and without ASD. But we quickly put this data set aside because of two main reasons. At first, it wasn't very ethical to use images of children's faces. And second, it was more of an image processing problem instead of a neuroscience problem. So we decided to work on an fMRI data, uh, which I'll describe in a minute. To address the challenge in autism spectrum disorder research and efforts toward automatic diagnostic classification, a large scale neurological sample, such as fMRI data is essential. In this project, we are using available pre-processed data, ABIDE, um, from a great data set called ABIDE Initiative, which stands for Autism Brain Imaging Data Exchange. ABIDE 1, which was released in August 2012, and uh, consists of more than 16 international sites that share their collected resting fMRI and corresponding structural and phenotypical information of over 11,000 individuals, including uh, 539 people diagnosed with ASD and the rest of them non-autistic subjects were from both genders and almost all ages. In addition to the fMRI data, the data set contains phenotypic data such as gender, age, and IQ. The data set uh, is well pre-processed in lots of different ways, including parcellation into 200 and 400 homogeneous brain regions in the cratic atlases and instead of other atlases. 
In this study guided from previous literature, we used the 200 cardiac atlases. By finding the correlation between different relevant regions of the brain, we can reduce available data for each participant from 63,201 to only 19,900 data points. The correlation matrix um, for each participant has a major effect on the reduction of the data size and th that can also result in more accurate outcomes. And here we can see the correlation um, formula, which we can um, use it for the Crodoc Atlas. Uh, once we framed our question and chose a data set, we began the implementation stage. To classify ASC brains from controlled brains, we had to choose from many machine learning and artificial intelligence classification tools. At first step, we started to concentrate on applying a simple machine learning algorithm, multi-layer perceptron, and use um, TensorFlow and CROSS to help with the implementation and code. Uh, and after that, the architecture of the network is shown in the slide. Our network, it has four layers. In the first layer, we use um, 8,000 neuron with the ReLU function. The second one, 13 neuron with a ReLU function again, and a third one again with a ReLU function and four neurons. And in the final stage, we use a sigmoid function, which is one neuron in the final um, layer. The output layer is binary, which tells us um, whether someone has autism, the, the participant has autism or not. We train our network um, with the splitted data into test and train the 19% of um, our data to train samples and the rest 10% of the data to the test sample. And to wrap it up, uh, we reached to 72% accuracy after training, after um, running our code uh, in the first step. And the 72% according to other papers was doing so great. Um, but the major obstacle hindering us from achieving a higher accuracy was overfitting by taking a quick look at our sample training procedure in this image. Uh, one can determine that at very early iteration of training, our training accuracy reached to 100%. However, test results will not pass over 72%. This means that our network is overfitted by training data and cannot be so accurate for data from outside. So it will get noise easily. One of the useful methods to overcome overfitting is to decrease the network's complexity. To do so, we made our network as simple as possible. Using only one sigmoid function um, as our um, activation function, we reached to 75 accuracy with 0.66 F bonus score. We also tried to use 400 region of interest data set, as by considering more brain regions, it could lead us to a higher precision. In this case, we trained a network of two layers, including one ReLU with four neurons and a sigmoid layer with one neuron, uh, and we reached to 76% accuracy with the f bonus score 0.63. Due to reducing complexity in our data for having a more reliable and faster computing, we've reduced the dimension of input data. Uh, to reach our goal, which is choosing data points that are more effective for our classification. At first, we separated autistic from non-autistic and drew the element by element average correlation matrix of autistics and non-autistics. Uh, after that, we have differentiated these two matrices from each other and sorted the result matrix ascending. Finally, chose the first and last 1,000 um, data because the 1,000 data from the first um, 19,900 um, 19, data and the last uh, 1,000 were so important and affect our data points so much. After that, we have trained the new limited 2,000 data points and the same simplified network of two layers, including one relay with four neurons and a sigmoid layer with one neuron is used, which is shown in the picture. And the training process using mean squared error as its last 
function and keeps training for 25 iterations. And the results were remarkable. 84% accuracy and 0.68 f bonus score. Um, that according to other papers, this result was some, some kind of notable result for us. In the end, um, as our work is not ended yet, we have some future work to do. Uh, one of the main things that we're going to do is using the CNN plus LSTM uh, architecture or by LSTM for time series because CNN is good for um, feature extraction and LSTM is good for using in time series. So we can uh, do the feature extraction and LSTM um, time series prediction in as our architecture because um, as our data may be bigger and uh, larger than this um, simple ABI data set, we, can, we should use some feature extraction that is uh, more reliable and it works better. After that, we can use uh, ANFIS to predict the severity of autism spectrum disorder in probiotic classifier using ANFIS, um, such as using phasy logics. And after that, we can invest the accuracy and subsets like age and sex differences to see whether they have any connectivity uh, to determine um, and whether someone has autism or not. Uh, but one of the main limitations we have for this data set is was, it was the low number of data set participants. Thank you for your attention. I hope uh, you enjoyed the presentation. Here's our group, uh, me, Mernos, Haisa, and Yusef. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Anes, for your presentation. We have uh, some questions for the audience. So uh, uh, Priyanka is asking, if, uh, how did you choose the hyperparameters of the initial network architecture? Um, you know, we have just trained. It was just test and training things. And it wasn't um, a really precise using. It was just um, rich with tests and training. It wasn't um, because of, for example, the five neuron will work better. We have just tested this five neuron and reached better hyperparameters. Mm -hmm. And uh, the others were asking uh, if you identify, so after training, if you, have, if you identified uh, some functional connectivity features that help classification more than others, I suppose. Um, the functional connectivity that in the last slide, let me just um, check it again. Um, in the last slide, I told that invest the accuracy in subsets like age and sex differences. We can use these columns that uh, were in our pre-processed data to see whether uh, if someone's sex and age has any connectivity to the results of being autistic or non-autistic. Uh, we should check this later in our future work. We haven't done it yet, but uh, we have in our plan to check the columns of the different uh, functional connectivity between the other features and the results in being autistic and non-autistic. Mm -hmm. That actually has to do with, uh, so Madine Sarbestani asked me to, to ask you a question on her behalf about the, the if you used age for improving classification. So, um, but yeah, you asked that, so thanks. Uh, uh, I'll take one more question from the audience. Um, mm -hmm. Carlos Hernandez is asking uh, why your approach uh, is better if in your, mm -hmm. well, they're asking, uh, so the, in your table of the results, there was a, yeah. a random forest uh, approach with 90% with accuracy. Our so, approach is not um, concurrently better than the random forest um, that, um, method because the random forest method uh, used the whole 19,900 data and this made the running um, slower than the usual time. But uh, we've chosen the important features in our data, the first 8,000 feature and the last 8,000 feature. And we hope by changing the architecture, we might reach more than 90% as we have reached um, to more than the first accuracy that we have already get. At first we've uh, reached to 74% and after that we have just reached to um, 85%. And uh, by then, I guess uh, if 
be choose the right data and um, because the other papers use the whole data, uh, we can reach better accuracy and we can just use better dimension reduction to reach better accuracy and F1S scores. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we need to move on now. And after, after yeah. that, I just want to thank Madine. And Madine was our supervisor during NeuroMatch and she helped us a lot. She guided us a lot and I hope she um, is doing well and I'm so sorry that I have informed her late so she couldn't maybe join our um, yeah, she talk is, and uh, presentation. She's posting another session. In another yeah, room. yeah, she told me. Okay, thank you very much, Anis. Uh, you have some other thank questions you. in the, the chat. Uh, maybe you can you can okay. reply. Okay. Yeah. Next. Yes, I, I would reply them. Thank you. Very thank much. you a lot. It's great to see thank projects you. from Neuromatch Academy presented at Neuromatch here. Um, so now our next speaker. Is